Hey everybody, it's uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Let's talk about this severe weather setup for tomorrow. The thing I'm watching tonight is just basically where this warm front is going to set up overnight and how that's going to move into the Carolinas tomorrow because I think that's going to dictate a lot of what we see. So let me show you the radar real quickly and you can still see we've got a lot of severe weather going on in Alabama, Mississippi. And as, as I expected, we're kind of seeing this all coalesce into one big line here. Um, and that's really what I expected to see most of the day is that we would see this eventually just become one massive line and then head our direction. And as it moves our direction, I think that's when we'll start to see kind of a better timing of this. The rain over us right now really isn't just, it's just rain. It's not that big a deal. But what I'm watching tonight, and I'm going to show you a closer up here. I'm going to pull up the, uh, I'm going to pull up the, uh, the temperatures real quickly here because I can kind of see where the warm front is. I'm going to zoom in here on the Carolinas and you can see somewhere in here we've got a warm front. This is the juicy air. The front itself, the main cold front is still back to the west. So it's kind of a race between the cold front, which is actually a couple pieces back here, and the warm front um, as these all kind of come together. Wherever that warm front goes, we're going to have some trouble in the morning. And the reason I think the warm front is going to come north is if you just look at this system, um, it's a powerhouse system and it's really pushing winds from the southwest so the, the wedge is going to break eventually we're going to see it, it bust out of here and we're, we're going to see um, some 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 warmer air surge into the region and just a quick look at the dew points um, across the southeast you can see dew points are surging down to the south pretty quickly so we've got some some really high dew point air 60s and 50s down there but if you look at the temperatures it's also kind of the same spot where the where the uh, where the boundary is. So as far as changes to the outlooks, there hasn't been any. Um, the outlook today was there. We will not get an update to this outlook till 6Z, which is now two o'clock in the morning. So we'll see if there's any adjustments to this at all. I have made some subtle changes to the timing of all this, and I'll kind of explain why as I kind of explain um, the setup here. One of the things that, you know, I get a lot of questions today, you know, how do tornadoes form and why do we have the setup for tornadoes? Well, the thing about the setup we have is the winds. The winds are everything about tornadoes. If you have wind shear, which is strong winds at the surface from one direction and then strong winds in the mid and upper levels from a different direction, that can create rotating columns of air. And if we get thunderstorms to develop, that updraft can tilt those columns on their end and we end up getting rotation in the updraft. That rotation in the updraft sometimes, sometimes called a supercell, sometimes called a mesocyclone that could form a wall cloud. And in these occasions where that develops strong enough, we can get a circulation forming, which is the tornado, which will come down to the surface and become a tornado. Um, the big caveat in all this is we have plenty of wind shear. We are not gonna be lacking for that tomorrow. It's that lifting mechanism um, the warm moist air that's heading in. So let me show you how this evolves. So you can see that warm moist air surging in and you see the storms kind of falling apart initially tonight, that leading edge. But look at that line, 5 a.m., 6, 7 a.m. So that line is the one we have to watch right there. That line and how much of this warm front gets pushed up. If you look at the wind flow, you can see it out of the southeast there, out of the south here, south, then out of the west here. These storms are going to have a lot of that rotation element going on within their storm. And because of that, that's why you're seeing these super high probabilities for tornadoes, 15% for the area in pink, you know, 10%. And again, these are really high numbers um, for our area. We normally, you know, you're talking less than a tenth of a percent chance of a tornado on any given day in the spring. And the fact that we've got 15% is like 30 times higher than it normally would be on this day. So that's a huge jump in our normal setup. And again, even though tornadoes are a concern and they get all the attention, I'm telling you damaging winds still will affect more people than the tornadoes. Um, as we say, wind is wind. 60, 70 mile an hour winds gonna damage your house the same as an EF0, EF1 tornado with similar wind speeds. Trees and houses don't care what produces the wind, and what direction the wind comes from, they just care about the force that the wind applies on the structure. So, you know, don't let your guard down just because it's, oh, it's a severe thunderstorm. Severe thunderstorms have strong winds and they do and can produce tornadoes with little or no warning. So speaking of warnings, make sure you have several ways to get warnings tomorrow. Uh, we reiterated that several times. 
Um, let me show you the updated future cast. I'm trying to look for it right here because um, I was just doing some, up <laughs> excuse me, some updates to it. So here we are, 8, 8, 8 o'clock tonight. We'll go through time. Um, you see the rain. This is just regular rain. This is probably, honestly, this rain is probably associated with the warm front coming north because look at the winds coming out of the southeast. So to me, that, that, that batch of rain moving through is probably going to be the warm front. And you'll notice that overnight as temperatures warm up. And look at that, due south winds at 7 a.m. So the winds are straight out of the south. Here comes the line. This is where we're going to start having issues. Comes into the mountains around 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Starts pushing east around 10 or 11. Gets to the Piedmont right there. And what you see in this line is there's probably little, little cells. I mean, these little cells could all be rotating. Not to mention the fact they're all producing straight line winds. That's 11 a.m. We go to noon. It's right over the I-77 corridor from Iredell County to Columbia. Starts pushing east at 1, but we still got storms pretty much right over the Piedmont by 2. Starts pushing out towards Wadesboro, Albemarle, Rockingham, um, towards the Sand Hills. Then starts cranking up. So you folks in Raleigh, Greensboro, probably early to mid-afternoon. I-95 corridor gets really active by 4 or 5 o'clock. And then it moves out to the coast by the evening hours. And I'm, for the folks on the coast, let me play this real quickly. Um, I'll, I'll pan it out there. You can see moving towards the coast by 5, 6 o'clock and then off the coast. What's interesting is on the back side, you see a couple of little rogue cells forming. Don't be shocked. I mean, look at the winds. They're still out of the south. So the actually west wind hasn't developed yet. So these are little tiny cells. And while the chances are lower with those, some of those storms could be possibly severe as well, um, especially hail with those and maybe some rotation. And then here comes the colder, stable air for Friday morning, some showers, maybe even some grapple or some sleet in some of these areas in the mountains. That's how cold this air is aloft. Uh, moving in. So I updated this map just recently. This is my most recent timing, 10, 8 to 10 a.m. in green. And again, I say some severe, probably a lower risk. Severe ramps up between 11 a.m. and 2, and then uh, 3 to 7 p.m. right there for areas to the east. And again, remember, our primary concern is straight line winds, but tornadoes, definitely a significant um, uh, impact from those. So what do you do if you have a tornado warning tomorrow? I mean, you know, you need to go to a safe spot. So in your house, apartment, condo, wherever you are, go to the lowest floor. Even if you're in a condo or high rise, try to make friends with people downstairs. If you can go down to like a workout room or some communal area that you can get to or another apartment, fine. If you can't, even in your apartment, no matter what floor, get to the middle of your house. This, this room is great because we've got one, two walls between you and outside here. We have one, two, three walls this way, one, two, this way one two three this way so all those walls between you and the outside this hallway in fact wouldn't be too bad to be in there and again the lowest floor means there's walls above your head you're all about protecting yourself from flying debris in these situations and if nothing happens tomorrow and there's no warnings for your area that's great but you should always have this plan it's like a fire drill or a safety plan everybody should know what to do in a tornado we shouldn't wait to the last minute when you've got five minutes to figure out what to do and as always grab our app um I love our app. Um, this is a shameless plug, obviously, for our app, but I will tell you, I honestly use our app a lot because uh, you can watch all our newscasts on here live anywhere, and you can go back and it's like it got a DVR. You can watch old newscasts, and if we're streaming or there's wall-to-wall -wall coverage, it'll be on here. Plus, push alerts for warnings. This will actually give you a warning for your phone where you live. Not If you live in Huntersville and there's a tornado warning in Rock Hill, you're not going to get that tornado warning. It's only going to be for where you live. So um, make sure you turn that on and make sure you have the GPS location so it actually knows the location where you're at. So that's kind of the thinking right now. Again, I'm going to make a couple updates tonight. The new data is coming in at around 9 o'clock, the new guidance and the timing of all this. Um, so you can see I'm, I may have to adjust these slightly um, for the timing overall. And if I really quickly look at the radar, so I'm looking at the speed right now. The speed of these things, let me quickly kind of do a quick storm track um, just to see the overall speed. So about 35, 40 miles an hour. So let's, for the heck of it, let's stop this and let's just do a crazy long storm track at 35 miles an hour. Um, puts it in Charlotte around 9 a.m. So if it maintains its speed, it would be 9 a.m. now. I mean, um, 9 a.m., yeah, if it slows down, could be sooner, could be later. So that's kind of interesting. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that just to put a quick storm track on it. Um, that's a long ways to go, but 
I'll keep an eye on it tonight. So, of course, we'll have complete coverage starting at 11 o'clock tonight. And if you're going to bed, that's fine. Just make sure you charge everything up, have a way to get warnings, and make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We'll keep you up to date.